the sweet grass basket, they call it the winnow, was used to harvest the rice, which made a lot of money for the economy here in the Low Country. People, the slave masters became rich off of that, you know. Um, and the sweetgrass basket, as a result of uh, that art craft, became a tool that was an asset to do the work that helped to bring the revenue. In 1931, Highway 17, a highway that hugged the coast through North and South Carolina, was paved. Tourism boomed, and as cars began to rumble along, Women began to sell their baskets from roadside stands. Visitors came looking for souvenirs, and sweetgrass baskets became a popular purchase. To make sweetgrass baskets, harvesters need to go into the marsh and collect grass, bringing home bundles for the basket makers to sow. Today, because of suburban development, the basket makers' access to the natural resource they need most Sweetgrass is increasingly limited. Many, many of the areas where the grass would just grow naturally has been replaced by concrete and mud. So now the basket makers or their husbands or sons, they have to travel tremendous distance to Georgia or Florida to get the sweetgrass. And hopefully they'll find a place you can go on without trespassing. And you know what you don't want to write? You spray it and kill it. There should be a whole lot of them on 17. Near the creek, they don't want you to go there no more. So we have to, some people go to Florida or Atlanta or a different place and bring it back and sell it to you. Historically, there was a really nice relationship, an ecology, if you will, where you had the basket maker that had sort of a either verbal or nonverbal understanding with landowners that it was okay for them to access those lands and gather the materials for the sweetgrass baskets, which the gathering of the materials doesn't impact the plants. It's actually a good thing for the plants overall. We subsequently found that that relationship or that arrangement has changed. Maybe individuals who may purchase a property or own property may not want folks to access their land in, in this historical arrangement that was set up previously. We found that that has definitely impacted the ability of the basket makers to gather the materials that are vital for the creation of their baskets. Some of the basket stands have already been dis displaced because of the uh, widening of 17 and the uh, commercial development that has occurred there. Well, when the gas station came, so we just had to just start doing it at the house. But now, you know, being that's their land, and we, there's nothing we could do about it, you know? What we can do? Well, I believe if I could hang on the stand, I would make the money, but. I'm not going across that highway. It's too dangerous. I walk too slow. As it is, I can't even understand because nobody can see the basket. The stand is too far back. It's the push to stand back. You, you, you really don't have those space. So I, I make about three or four steps from my off the porch, and right there is the wall. See. heritage in communities like Hamlin, Six Mile, Seven Mile, Ten Mile, Scanlonville, Phillips. You have all of these communities that are in Mount Pleasant. In particular, people know these communities for the sweetgrass baskets. And what people have come to note as where I can go get one is on Highway 17. And so now, if Highway 17 is again cut, and then you also have this Hungry Neck Boulevard cut through, where exactly are the sweetgrass stands going to end up? It would not be a Charleston thing. It would not be a Gullah Geechee thing to now only buy a sweetgrass basket in a store, in somebody's gift shop, in somebody's tourism place. You would not see the truth of the culture if you didn't see those men and women sitting there sewing for hours and then be able to appreciate how much you have to spend to even obtain one of those sacred objects.
But that's where my the, that house over there got stuck right in the middle of the highway. That's where that 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 was the highway. So See? they've actually moved the house. They moved that the you, house. That you were born in. That, that they moved the house, house yeah. Right they there. moved it off of Highway mm -hmm. And they already built a row of cars going up and down, and we ain't get paid yet. We ain't get a dime. That because the, the property really belongs to our grandfather and great grandfather. The people who cook homes is in the way. They gotta go. And there's quite a few homes as, as they gotta go to. Uh, Catherine Cummings. She had to move no after um, after they take her house. Her children come and take her to Atlanta, Georgia. Really? So she's gone? Yeah, she's gone. It's very sad. And that was my best friend. I just ain't fair. But how they treat us, it's just, it's just not fair. It seems like everywhere we go, they want to come in and take in that. Where, she, where we got our property down there, Dad wanted to take that too. And now so many people move into the neighborhood now. It's just like uh, someplace I've never been. Everybody coming in, trying to change things the way they want it, and it's not doing us no good. They ain't doing the animal no good because they're taking all the place for themselves. We're here all our life. And for them just come in and just it's Fair, but can't do nothing about it. But ain't nothing I can do about it. And the thing is, if you can't do nothing about it, that's what hurts. Let's go back to history now. They were taught not to speak up, stay in your place. And that has been passed down. And as modern and as educated as we have become, there's still a lot of that sentiment that's unspoken, all right? And then that's a, a, a tough road anyway, especially because when you're in the minority, to challenge and buck the system. So a lot of people are intimidated by that. 